So on the scope here, I'm displaying the waveform coming from this humbucker style pickup. I'm buffering that through a TL072 op amp in a non-inverting configuration. So there's various bits of this that are a little bit janky, but we can get the basic idea. I'm exciting the pickup using this other pickup that I've removed the pole pieces from. So I'm just running a signal from the signal generator output here through the coil wire. There's still a magnet here. Ideally, I should remove that, but it's epoxied here and I didn't feel like taking power tools to it. Anyway, I'm running a square wave into this coil and it's being picked up by the humbucker pickup down here. The current created in the pickup here is proportional to the change in current in the excitation coil. So the waveforms we measure are actually the derivative of the input waveforms. And let's see what happens if I change the waveform to something else. So let's change it to a ramp waveform. Readjust things here. I'm gonna to have to re-trigger things. So notice that the ramp turns into a square wave kind of thing. Although again, there's quite a bit of jank going on. Anyway, essentially the physics of this is that whatever the waveform we're putting in here, this is picking up the derivative of it. So that's why when we were putting in a square wave, let me put the square wave back in, we get this impulse looking kind of setup here. So we put in a square wave and you see there's an upgoing impulse and a downgoing impulse. Of course, there's a bunch of filtering going on also. So let's put in a, well, actually, let's just take the frequency of this square wave and start increasing the frequency. So I'm going to click frequency, going to twist this knob over here. And as we start increasing the frequency, uh, at that point, you don't really see the up and down pulses quite so much anymore. And let's adjust the horizontal skill here. There we go. Okay, I'm around two kilohertz. I'm gonna increase it further. Now it's pretty much just a sine wave. Okay, so I've now put this on a sine wave input and let's play around with the frequency here. We see that there's a peak frequency that's around 4.6. You wanna be careful about interpreting that though, because remember, this is essentially taking a derivative in here, so there's a zero built into it. So I would have to think a bit about what that actually means in terms of the resonant response. Let's see if I can figure out how to use the scope to make a frequency domain plot. Let's click analyze. Uh, what kind of features do we have? Frequency response analysis. Yeah, do that. Okay, how do I do that? Open dialog. Oh, that looks useful. Okay, so let's say that's definitely way too high. Let's go up to fifth. No, sorry. Let's go up to 15 kilohertz and we'll start say at 80 hertz because that's the lowest frequency on the guitar i think it's like 82 hertz something like that all right 0.60 source is one source input output oh the way this is set up you have to measure on two but I also need to measure the input. So I need to go grab another scope probe. I'll be right back. Oh, first let me boost this up. Let's go up to one volt, peak to peak. All right. Okay, run analysis. Okay, so ignore the pink line. That's the phase. Here's the magnitude. Now, the thing to remember is that the underlying physics results in us measuring a derivative of this signal. That derivative results in this zero in the Laplace domain, giving this high pass effect. So to get the actual peak of this filter, we would probably want to take this plot 
and apply a correction to it to get rid of that. So the etchel peak is probably down around here somewhere. Okay, so this peak was around 4.5K. The actual peak is going to be less than that. Remember that this is artificially deflated by the zero we get in the Laplace transform domain from that derivative effect. But let's do another fun experiment here. I added a 100K ohm resistor here between the output of the pickup and ground in order to model a volume control. So let's rerun that plot. Ah, look at this. So the peak definitely shifted down here. So that's, I don't know, maybe like 1.5K, something like that. And it's not as peaky. Again, this is very difficult to interpret because there's this artificial slope that's been placed on top of everything. I know that there's a way to save data to a USB stick and also these scopes, I believe, are hooked up to these computers. I need to ask my students how to use that. They use it in various laboratories. So if we could download the actual data, then we could do some post-processing on this. I would like to measure the impedance of the pickup. So I rigged up this little circuit where we can put in a voltage. The op amp turns that voltage into a current. That current then goes through the pickup. And so we know what the current is. And then by looking at the voltage, we can back out what the impedance is. Here's the voltage going in. Here's the voltage coming out of the op amp. So that's proportional to the voltage. And let's see, if I turn the frequency knob here, see there's a peak around this, uh, 4.7, something like that. Let's make a plot. Okay, so I just tried making a frequency domain plot and something weird is happening down at the lower end. So at lower frequencies, I'm getting this weird interference of some sort. There's some jankiness going on. Admittedly, this is not the highest precision test setup in the universe. Anyway, let's try it. Okay, let's run analysis. Yeah, at the lower frequency, there's jank being picked up. So I'm not trusting what's happening down here. Okay, now that's looking more like sine waves. Or I think the jank is still present. It's just at higher amplitudes, the jank doesn't matter. All right, so there's a peak. I sense a peak in the voltage at the output of the op amp around four kilohertz. There we go.